Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And today we are going to talk about bulk. Yeah. <laughs> like, not... Like bulk, like when you go to Costco and buy bulk foods. Or I was thinking, like, like adding on some extra weight. Oh, bulk around the middle. Yes. There is also the candy store, Mr. Bulky. Oh, yeah, Mr. Bulky. So I wonder if everybody... Well, how... That's some sort of chain. Wonder but... where the hell that place is located. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we, we have one in our mall here <laughs> called, called Mr. Bulky's, and all the candy is in like vats, and you yeah. shovel it out into another container into your mouth. Right. No, I'm you kidding. shovel it into a decanter and, and take uh, it home. Lindsay worked there. Yeah, our, a long time. The middle child worked there. She worked there for a long well, time. High school, two or two years. Or, well, until she became the mall cop. Mall cop. From Mr. Some, yeah. Bulky to, to Mall Cop. Cop. <laughs> oh, that could be a That's movie memoir. title. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she'll be thrilled that we're talking about that. She, uh, Lindsay listens sometimes, isn't she? Oh, I don't know. She's not. I, been, did, I figured none of our family listened. No, because Lindsay's been like, you guys are amazing. You know, like she's yeah. texted us. You know who I know does listen? Who? Lonnie. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Lonnie listens. Lonnie listens. And uh, I listening, actually, Lonnie. I have a little bit of bad news for Lonnie, Uh-oh. directly related to this topic. So, <laughs> well, well, here I'm gonna I'm gonna write it down. I don't want to give it away too soon. Lonnie, keep listening. <laughs> okay, so Lonnie, you are now a sewing out loud fame. Oh, she's been gunning for this. I know. This is she why get, you're getting what you yeah, asked for. Yeah, that's right. She's the evil genius. She's been waiting. She's been waiting. Okay, so bulk. You talk about bulk all the time. I talk about bulk all the time. You talk about it um, to me. You talk about it to other people. And it's a big, like, whenever you sort of critique or give me feedback on my sewing, like, this comes up quite often. I say, think about the bulk. Are you adding bulk? You don't want to add bulk. And bulk <laughs> is different than volume. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. volume, you might be adding a pleat, you know, pleats or ruffles or something like that. That that that's volume. It's yeah, not so bulk. Sometimes we bulk want... is something we're trying to get rid of yes. or stay away from. Sometimes we want a big ruffled dress. Actually, you have that. Is this like the Met Costume Museum calendar you have all cut up and put on the wall oh, here? Oh gosh, what calendar? Oh, is historical this? fashion. Yeah. So they're from different places. Are they? Okay. I guess all the all the don't. I, I'm not don't, sure. Don't I'd have to go over there and mic. read. Yeah, no, I have to go there. <laughs> so I'm seeing. Like, I used to sell those calendars in the store. Oh, did you? So I'm yeah, seeing. Yeah, every year they put out a calendar of all the historic garments i'm seeing uh like bustled skirts and leg of mutton sleeves right. and um a dress that's made of hoops like with fabric around it anyway so yeah sometimes sometimes we want volume if you were ever a fashion student you got tired of the term conspicuous consumption in class that was always how it's like you know in medieval up to I mean, I guess up to when people started dressing like they were naked, like more recently, you know, the rich people wanted to show off like they, they had more all this. The fabric. more clothes you had, right? The yeah, more, right. the more clothing you had on your body, right. So to speak, the the richer you were, right? right. And well, I, the, you know, the hat thing is going on at the St. Louis Art Museum right now. And oh yeah, they, they did a, a special little piece on it on I think CBS Sunday Morning mm-hmm. their their program, and they said why don't what did the hats imply or you right. know what did, and the more fancy the hat or whatever the more elegant was how much money you had and then she said why don't we wear them anymore and so well we were you know we're more mobile and we travel the other reason we don't wear them is our hair is clean now yep <laughs> That's right. They didn't use to wash their hair. No, no one. It, there were no coiffures. Uh, yeah, yeah. There were no hairstyles. They shoved them under those hats. Yep, wearing a wig or something. So anyway, right. uh, the the topic of bulk is sort of a broad one, but I think we need to use some sort of specific examples. Right. Um. One time, or do you want to start out with one? Well, go ahead. No. Okay. Um. <laughs> one time, I made a jacket. This is where I really taught you about bulk. Yeah. Time I made a jacket and I had um, 
not followed the rules and I finished this the sleeve cap like you know of the sleeve well you didn't know my rules then yeah, yeah of the with the serger and I finished the arm side with the serger too and then I sewed it together and like it looked it looked fine on the it outside it wasn't too bad but on the inside what this resulted in was right bulk bulk it was two finished seams Right up next to each other. And right. all bulky up in and around and through your arm's eye and all that. Yeah. And the, the and arm, like, underarm oh. area. Well, and also I hadn't trimmed away any seam allowance because right. I just finished the pattern pieces, right. right? So what you told me to do was to run like the arm hole, the arm side part of the garment right. through the serger again, finishing both the sleeve and the bodice uh, back and front, you know, with the serger, those two seam allowances together, therefore decreasing. You're saying you took the sleeve and the arm's yep. eye uh-huh. and finished them off yep. with one serger. So they were together yep. and in one. So there wasn't all that ball. The allowance was cut down. Yeah, allowance was cut down. And it was all serged together. They were sewn together. This was after... Making sure that it fit and everything, right? right? Okay, right. you know, uh, you don't want to trim your seam allowance down before that or right. anything. Um, so it fit fine. And that reduced a lot of bulk. So it went right. from like two little flappy seam allowances to one thinner, enclosed, thinner thin, enclosed right. seam allowance. Um, do you have another example that we could talk about before we... Or or you want to start off with something more well, general? Well, anytime you're, I mean, that's basically talking about grading a seam. Mm-hmm. Because you, you start with a certain seam allowance to sew the garment together, right? Mm-hmm. And then when you take it down, whether you take them down together or you grade it where one side of, one seam is, you know, briefer than the other, uh-huh. okay, which a lot of times we'll do like on a facing. Right. Um. That's called grading seams. So what it, all it's doing is redu- reducing bulk so everything can lay nice. That's basically the reason. Well, okay, but I'm going to get into semantics here. Okay. If you cut down both seam allowances from the different pattern pieces to the same length, is mm-hmm. that grading or just trimming? It's, it's well, it's probably, probably could, should be said that it is trimming. Yeah, it's Because not. grading, what it does is, you Gradual. know, it, it's. One seam is shorter yeah. than the other, right? Or yeah. there's less of an allowance. So it allows it to roll in a certain direction mm-hmm. better and usually be, um, you know, top stitch where you, um, what do I want to say? When you, when you stitch. Uh, understitch. When you understitch. Your, <laughs> okay, your, so your, so I wouldn't call what I did to my sleeve grading, though. Well, you, will, you still were grading down the, Trimming what, it. Okay. What we used to do before we had sergers, though. Okay. <laughs> so if this person doesn't have a serger, okay. they may grade okay. their their sleeve. But well, you can, had a serger, so yeah. you got to trim it all and encase it together. Yeah. Well, let's talk about grading separately, though. I don't okay. I don't want to blur the lines, all right. okay, um, between finishing it right. off with a serger and grading it. So grading, like, if mom's kind of, it was, like, touching her neckline, you know, and that's right. what I think of when I think of facings a lot of the time, too. So you have sewn together, like, you know, your shirt, okay? Right. You have a front and back of your shirt, and there's either, like, a front facing or a facing that goes all the way around the back and the front or Uh whatever. Uh, And then you have these two layers of fabric. So then when you fold it over, Mm -hmm. you have four layers of fabric, right? You have the facing, the facing seam allowance. And the two pieces of fabric. And the The bodice seam allowance and the bodice, right? right? So you've got four four layers of fabric there, and this as long as you don't have any interfacing, yes, or yeah, or maybe you got interfacing Mm. too. Um, So then you would grade that. So talk about grading a little bit. So when you grade, you want to have one seam allowance cut down to say a quarter inch, Uh and one cut down to say three eighths, Uh right? So that they can one can basically sort of slide over the other so the one that is the shortest would be the one that is on the facing side where you are going to do that top stitching under stitching that we call under stitching uh-huh, uh-huh. right the reason i'm saying top stitching is i don't for people who don't know what under stitching is I, I want them to get a picture of your top stitching just on the facing right 
The facing and the two seam allowances. And the two seam allowances. They are. This is folded out flat. Yeah. But you're just on the facing, and you're going through the short seam allowance first because that's your facing, mm -hmm. right? You cut down, and the one below it. Now, the other thing you may have done in here is you may have done some nipping. Like right? clipping of clipping curves, of notching curves, or of actually curves, notching, notching out some curves, uh -huh. especially if you got a curve, right? Right, with right. a lot of necklines, right, on. right, mm -hmm. right. Especially if it's a, it's a severe curve, uh -huh. you know, you're going to do some, you, and if it's a bulkier fabric, you're actually not just going to clip, but you will notch, so mm -hmm. you will take out the bulk. bulk. Take right. out the bulk. Okay. Right. Well, I don't. I don't want our <laughs> listeners to get top stitching and under stitching right. mixed up, though, either. Um, but I know what you're saying. That right. You're going from the facing side. Yes, and you're stitching on top. Yeah, on top. Uh, you're not on top of the facing, not yeah. from underneath, but on top. On top. On top. Right. And yeah, I don't know if we have like uh, actually a video on under stitching. Wouldn't be a bad idea. We we were just making Let's video write plans. That down. That's what making I'm saying, video right. plans. Well, today. and I don't want to give you know a seam grading fa facing lesson here. I want to talk about the concept of bulk. Yep. And when you turn something, and why it doesn't work if you've got bulk in there, or if you leave too much bulk someplace why it's not going to look right why it's not going to look finished why it might look homemade yeah, yeah. another pa place that you were that i like to trim down and do the same treatment as you talked about on the sleeves uh -huh. is when you're connecting a skirt to a bodice so there's a waistline uh -huh. and i will sit oftentimes do exactly the same thing so that skirt to that bodice and then when I know it fits, I go back and surge them together. Right. So that there's not that stuff floating around in there. Yeah, not a bunch of extra. Yeah. yeah and one wanting to fold one way and one one to fold the other. And a serger is so nice for that. Because right. if you have made garments and you don't have a serger, you that bodice to the skirt example is such a good one. I've yeah, seen, it is. <clears throat> I've seen a lot of pinked. Flappy edges on the inside. You know what color I turn <laughs> yeah. when I hear pink. But you know, anyway. So, um, I've seen a lot of pinked flappy edges on the inside there. And of course, if it's your only option, you know, for doing something like that, it, it's, you know, makes sense. Right. Uh, but it, it, a serger can be really nice for that. So, um, and you've got a few more examples there. Well, but before we get to those, let's pause oh. for a message break. <laughs> Hey, Mal. Hey, Mom. I heard you were easy. Oh, no! How what does that mean? No, it means what, what you, I think what you really heard was, well, Mallory, your easy tea looks so good on you. Oh, yes. that, I, you know, I should have known if that it was something about something you made. Like you said, you're getting into your golden years, sometimes <laughs> You know, miss mishearing things. It happens. No, you're right? the one that mishears things. <laughs> I know this. You make lapel pins about it. Okay, so uh, I am currently wearing an Easy Tee, and I wear them all the time. Uh, the Easy Tee is a semi-fitted short sleeve T-shirt made out of a woven fabric, and you draft the Easy Tee to fit your measurements by taking the Easy T class. Well, how do I take this class? It's an online class that you can watch anytime on SoHere.com. To purchase the class, go to SoHere.com slash Easy T. That's just E-A-S-Y-T. Is this on my computer? It's on your computer. It's on your phone. It's on your iPad. The class is divided up into short easily consumable segments, some of which you may not ever need to watch ever again, but some of which you might want to revisit. So you have the ability to mark lessons as completed and also to star lessons so you can go back and revisit the ones that are most important to you. And I can vouch, Mallory's Easy Tea is a lot easier than Mallory is. <laughs> Once again, go to SoHere.com slash Easy Tea to begin your pattern drafting journey. Sewing out loud. All right, and we're back. Okay, I, we kept the people waiting long enough, Mom. What's your next example? Okay, well, now we're going back to seam allowance again. Okay. But this is a little bit different. I'm talking about a seam allowance that basically um, you have sewn, say, a side seam. That okay. would be a good example. 
So if you have a sign seam and you've sewn your five eighths or whatever, you can iron it flat, right? Right. Well, what I will do, especially on a woven, is I will have surged, right, over or overcast on those seams before I ever stitch them. Okay. Okay. So I've cut out my my pieces, like okay. the pieces of my garment, and I go, ooh, the side seams are going to be left raw, you know, and here's a back seam that's going to be left raw that I'm going to put a zipper in. And oh, my shoulder seams are going to be left raw. I am going to surge all of those. Uh huh. Now my arms eye, I'm going to stay stitch. Uh huh. Right, because I'm going to surge it later and do all that stuff. Right. Later. And when I surge, when I do that overcast, what stitch would I use, Mallory? Good on question. my serger, and how many threads? Yeah. Well, that's part. And of what the, kind of threads? That's part of the stitch. Okay. It's called a three-thread overlock narrow. Right. Okay. And there's a reason. The three thread is less bulk. I'm also going to do a stitch as long as my fabric will tolerate and not ravel. Um, and so I don't want it close and stacked up on itself. Yeah, I want it far apart. I'm reducing the bulk of that. I think finish. that that sentence can sound a little funny. Okay. when you're hearing it, as long as, you know, so mom's not going to do a two length. She's going to do a three. Right. A Maybe 3. a four. Point five, a four. Maybe yeah. a four. Yeah. So the, but so, whatever keeps that edge from raveling mm -hmm. as long as the stitch can be is what I'm going to do. Yeah. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm probably going to use, you know, serger thread. Right. Which Normal is of a lighter thread. weight. Yep. Or I could even use... Like machine, embroidery machine embroidery thread, thread because it's very fine or um, cotton darning thread is very fine. A lightweight thread. So a three thread, just real quick to define this, a three thread overlock narrow right. is a three thread stitch on your serger. It uses one needle and um, this is where we get into Lonnie's bad news. Um, <laughs> the three thread overlock narrow is using the right needle, Lonnie. Yeah. <laughs> because you get the skinniest... Get the Narrow. Finish with that. You the get narrow the narrow. Stitch. And so then you're using your two loopers on top of that. Okay. And can we talk about the three thread narrow or do you in another application or do you? you well, I don't know if that's keep, where you want to go. That's fine with me. That's that's where. Are you, we reducing bulk if we use We're it? reducing yes. bulk because your recommended stitch for most knit garments. Yep. Is the three thread overlock narrow. Absolutely. Or, you, or even a three thread rolled. To seam them? Yep. It depends on what it is. I have seamed with a three-thread rolled edge. If it's very fine, uh -huh. like a chiffon, I may use a three-thread. But that's thread not a knit. Oh, okay. okay. We were talking okay. about we're knits. Okay, we're talking about knits. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, so we're we're talking about knits right. here. You're recommending? No, but I've used okay. I've used rolled on like a sheer sort of knit panel in a leotard or something, mm -hmm. I've used the roll tam. Well, what Lonnie posted on Instagram was uh -oh, that what you she, do, Lonnie? she didn't think that she was going to become a convert from using the four thread, um, you know, overlock right. stitch. And then she was like, oh, I had to switch to a three thread because my right needle broke baptism by fire. And I was like, oh, yeah. Your left needle needed to break, not your right needle. So she was doing a three-thread overlock. And that will make a terrible seam in a knit, <laughs> Lonnie. Three, she was doing a three-thread overlock wide. Right. So I don't I don't think it ended up looking terrible, but we've had quite a few converse to the three-thread overlock narrow, especially in children's clothing. Well, the other thing is when you're using the two-needle threads, you get a more stable stitch. Uh -huh. So if I'm doing that on action wear or dance wear or workout wear, whatever you want to call it, I'm more likely to pop that stitch when I'm putting it on or when I'm doing my back bend or when I'm doing... Because it doesn't allow you to stretch it. Doesn't it doesn't allow as much stretch. And right. Lonnie was saying she felt like on the kids' clothes she was making that the four thread provided stability and she was afraid her kids were just going to, you know, rip through the three thread. Well, you know, that might be okay, especially if these are not skin-tight clothes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, but if these were tight clothes, mm -hmm. her durability would go down, basically, with a four thread. And that three thread overlock narrow, I think maybe it was Kim that posted in the group, like, footy pajamas that she was making for the kids. And I thought, 
oh man, a three thread could really give you more uh, room to curve. Well, that's you know, true too. Right. They were these; li- they had little right. feet in them, little you know. Feet, right. And I was like, "Oh man, yeah, I think I, I think I'd want to use the three thread narrow there for sure." And she said that she had switched well, and enjoyed. I it, mean, you know, let me put it to you this way, Lonnie: <laughs> <laughs> How many stitches do you use in your conventional machine right? when you stitch a seam? Oh my goodness, I think that's only two threads, yeah. and now you're using three. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so think about that. So Lonnie, she, you're, we're giving Lonnie a hard time, and she can handle it. <laughs> we're going to get stickers all over everything. That's right. Lonnie's that's a right. sticker person. Lonnie's a sticker crazy person. No, um, so we, yeah, people are going to be like, they were so mean to this girl named Lonnie. You know, <laughs> It's because Lonnie knows how to dish it out, too. She, she deserves it. Yes. So anyway, your three-thread overlock narrow, that I feel like has been just a really big a uh, sticking point or a big yeah. um it's a it's a piece of advice now, that we offer everybody a lot. do what you finally think is best for you uh-huh but give my, it a try my right? recommendation comes from my experience and um knowing what works for me but you know like I said, if she's making like a polo shirt and using a four thread overlock, nah. yeah, yeah, go ahead, not a big, deal. big deal. But like a leotard, a leotard, you might be sorry because it's just not going to stretch. Yeah, and you know when it stretches the most is when you're putting it on. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not even when you're like you know in it. It's right. It's it's when you're putting it on. Well, and that's an interesting concept. People think of the four thread. Um, Okay, four thread, more stable, stronger, won't break. But if you're working with a knit right. that's stretchy, 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 you actually want, of course you don't want the stitch want to give. break, but right. you need it to give. Um, and then, you know, maybe you can also use stretchy thread for that. Yeah. That would help too. That would Woo-hoo. make it even stretchier. Okay, you got more examples well, there? Well, another way to lessen your bulk mm-hmm. is do be careful about your interfacings. Oh, yeah. And... So we talk about, like, I just don't ever put in a fusible interfacing ever. Don't like the way they're made. Don't like what they're made out of. And don't like what they turn into. Yep. Okay. That I've had, um, you know, people complain about they turn crumply or crinkly or they can actually hear them after a while, which I think is really funny. They, they you know, it's generally because they're not a fibrous... It's not the fiber that we sew with. It's it, yeah. A right. lot of times, it's a cellulose type product, so it's more like a paper product. Right. Um. So, again, my favorite cotton organdy. Oh, the cotton organdy isn't stiff enough. Use two layers of cotton organdy. <laughs> what about silk organdy? It works too. And what use if two, I use two layers of silk organdy if one isn't enough? Or if you have um, if you're making a shirt out of like a cotton and just use two layers of the cotton. Two where layers you would use of the one. cotton or. You might not need interfacing. You now, know, I'm yeah. really being really careful about saying this. Uh-huh. Because if you have a pattern and it suggests interfacing, you probably need it. Right. But then again, if you are jumping away from the recommended fabrics that it's using, it might. It probably also says you can use fusible or facing too. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't write that in my pattern. But anyway, um, you know... This is all judgment. And are you adding bulk or are you not adding bulk? Well, and I may. And a... do you need to add? You're, you're trying to add stiffness, not bulk. You're trying to add form. Stability. Right. Form's a good word. Right. Shape. 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 You know, right. so if you do have something that's not keeping its shape. Right. You know, yes, maybe you need to add something to stiffen it. Now, you know, I I've a... actually put tool before. In oh, things, yeah. Like a flat piece of tool just because I wanted a little bit more of a stiffening or something. I made a button up shirt. I'm going to finish my sentence. Um, <laughs> I'll let you this time. I made a button up shirt and it was supposed to be a woven button up shirt and uh, made out of like a lightweight woven. They told you to interface the placket and the collar, right. et cetera. Well, <laughs> I made the shirt part out of an ITY knit. This is like a thin knit. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I made the placket and the collar out of denim, right. like a black denim. And so, you know, that's two layers of denim. I'm not interfacing nope. that. And, it, well, it's two layers on a button placket that has a 5 eighths inch seam allowance. And so really it ends up being almost like, like four layers yeah. the whole time. And I'm like, I'm not interfacing this. 
You know, a lot of, if I ever replace a fabric with something that is heavier or stiffer or like I'm using canvas instead of, you know, this thing or whatever, I really will forego the interfacing. I forego the interfacing a lot. In fact, one of our group members, Jackie, a very dear friend of ours, she talks about how when she makes her husband button up shirts, which she makes a lot of. And she uses a lot of like quilting cotton, quilting cotton. cottons, yep. uh, you know, besides shirting. Yes, yes. So she talks about how she doesn't she use. She doesn't interface that collar, all. the placket, nothing. Now she stabilizes it like when she makes a buttonhole or something. Right. She'll use the stabilizer that tears away so that, you know, she gets a good shape on her buttonhole. Or if she doesn't, she does now. No. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I have also interfaced with quilting cotton. Yeah. Uh, we, ha- we have a um, woven cotton here that's a very fine cotton that we use. Um, it's just a white combed cotton that we have a bolt of that we use for facings and inner type things that, you know, don't always get seen by the public, but, you know, um, perform some other function. Well, and that's the thing is you were talking about your, we were, well, we had a very heated discussion about collars today. And actually, I just wrote down something else about that. And I, I just wrote down something too. I think maybe I'm not going to talk about it until I'll, collar share, time. I'll share it with you privately. Maybe okay. collar time. Yes, collar time. So, um, the you know, we were talking about shirt and shirt collars and the interfacing and how we, we don't do that all the time. And then you're like, yeah, what if you make a sheer shirt? Right. And Sharon, you know, she made uh, some button-up shirts from sheer fabric and actually gave them away as presents, which I'm like... I still, oh. I still don't know how she does that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how she did it either. But she did, and you know, you like, what are you gonna put in there? You, of course, you can interface sheer fabric somehow, but you're gonna take away the sheerness with other sheer fabric, know? right? With other sheer fabric, but like, you're not. I wouldn't put a fusible interfacing in there. Like, obviously, there are other options, right? And cutting two layers of the fabric or putting a piece of cotton organdy in there, cutting them out at the same time, is a really great way to do that. So. I uh, I think that's that's a good point. Is you're interfacing now? You know, I don't know if you want to get into this. Uh oh. And we might not, because this is a garment sewing podcast. But a lot, Ooh, a lot of what are you going to talk yeah, about? I think about bulk reduction a lot in bag making. Oh my gosh! Yes, people are crazy. Yeah. With the bulk in bags, they're like, I'm going to piece this thing together and make an extra seam, and then I'm going to sew then I'm gonna it. And then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to use my gonna, walking foot, and I'm going to, and I'm going to, and I'm going to put batting in all of my up seams, with a brick. too. And I, yeah, I have like six layers here, two batting, four fabric, you know, all these different things. And then and not only does it add bulk and maybe make you a, a brick, but it's a, it's a, a, a pain. Well, your seams silver. are going to look like crap, too. Yeah, your stitch, your stitch probably. You're gonna have to hammer all those seams and then press them, and yeah. So I don't know. Maybe just real quick, want to throw this in there. If you're told to use batting in a bag pattern or something like that, it doesn't have to go all the way to the seams. seams. Okay, Mm -hmm. all the time. Also with bags, it's very popular. I feel like for people to make bags or right patterns for bags made from quilting cotton Mm -hmm. and i whenever i make a bag i make it out of something stiffer well i use a lot of home they're all they're always like cut out 16 pieces of quilting cotton and cut out 16 pieces of interfacing and i'm like i'm just cutting out the one layer you know of my home deck fabric you know and And a lining yeah and that's what i mean so i'm not i'm not interfacing anything right you know (laughs) because i'm using home deck fabric right and so you know okay good video make a difference good video our favorite purse strap or bag strap and how to make it we should do that we have that do we have that i think i'll I'll, uh sam um -hmm. i think it's in an inside cd sewing studio where we make our perfect purse strap i think we do and so that's that's a really good one, and we that it, we that, put a small amount of batting in it and fold it over and top stitch it, and it's wonderful. And it it, it came to my mind. So, um, well, you have any other examples? I do. Of I have buttonholes. Okay. So, um, again, don't add bulk if they're too bulky. First of all, they look awkward, right? Or ugly. 
you know, um, that's a fine why, line. That's why you're going to test your buttonholes. Mm-hmm. If you're making a bound buttonhole, you better test it on something. If you're making a machine buttonhole, you better <laughs> test it on your stuff. So you know what it looks like. You may change your mind as to what kind of buttonhole you want. <laughs> I made my what? just a little aside here. <laughs> made my first bound buttonhole a while ago. I think I tested it like 20 times. <laughs> these little buttonholes. I was like, it's not quite, because of course I right. was, I wasn't following a pattern. I wasn't supposed to use a bound buttonhole right. on this pattern at all. Like it called for, didn't even call for a buttonhole. Um, you know, and so I'm like, well, how do I want to do this? Oh, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm not going to do the distance they said to do in the Vogue sewing book, you know? <laughs> so, anyway, uh, yeah, testing is important. So what I want to say about buttonholes <laughs> is, again, I suggest machine embroidery thread or the quilt, the cotton darning, okay, cotton darning thread and cotton machine embroidery thread are the same, same thing. thing. Like, and, and it could be labeled either way on the end of the spool, cotton darning or cotton embroidery. And it's a lightweight cotton It's a thread. lightweight cotton thread. And those will give you a nice, flat, non-bulky buttonhole. But always stabilize it. And uh, tear away stabilizer on the you, back. If you have any questions about buttonholes, go listen to the Buttonhole Podcast. Go listen to the Buttonhole I think co- that's a, a couple of podcasts ago. That's right. And it was a hit. Okay. The <laughs> other thing I'm going to talk, I'd like to talk about are hymns. Okay. Okay. Hymns you, were a big, big deal when I first learned to sew. <laughs> so that would be... Is that 50-something years ago? And they're ago? not a big deal now. Well, <laughs> they're, a, they're a different deal. Right, I know. Okay, yeah, they're a different deal. And if you had a cotton dress, you know, you had a two-and-a-half-inch hem, and you had uh, hem tape is what they called it. Uh-huh. You actually put this tape on the hem and then hemmed it, okay? If you hemmed it by machine or by hand and or whatever, Let's not do that anymore, okay? <laughs> well, I I got really smart really fast. I didn't have any hem tape, okay, uh-huh. one time. And I had this flat piece of lace, and so I instead put lace as hem tape. Uh-huh. And I thought it was my idea until I showed it to somebody. <laughs> and they're like, oh. It was your idea for a little bit, It was right? my <laughs> idea for like a day and a half. Uh-huh. And then I showed it to um, Dorothy, um, which was my friend's mother, and she said, oh. Oh, yes, I do that sometimes, especially when I can't find tape to match the color or uh-huh. whatever. And I said, well, I'm doing it from now on because I thought him tape was pretty ugly. And it was really an ugly stuff, you guys. It, it was not attractive. It was this, like, polyester, yucky, slick, dumb stuff. I don't know. <laughs> and you were always supposed to buy it to match your fabric. I don't. I guess we used it because we didn't have a good finish for our hem. I don't yeah. know. So what I do now, okay... If I really do want a two-inch hem or two-and-a-half-inch hem, which I don't really do that often anymore. Right. Especially, but on a cotton dress. Or say I smocked a little girl's dress, and then I would put sometimes a four-inch hem in because you want the weight to pull it down. When are you going to smock a little girl's dress? Oh, Mom? I've done that, and I've got I've them all saved. <laughs> and I don't have to do them anymore. You don't have to do it again. That's right. <laughs> They've been through 14 children, I think. But anyway, um, you know, I surge that edge of that. And then uh-huh. I go and do my blind hem. Right. If I did not have a serger, what I would do is I would turn that over like a tiny hem, hem it with machine, and then, you know, just do a tiny, tiny hem on the edge of that and then turn it up and do my hem. I wouldn't bother with all this tape and adding and all this stuff unless I wanted to put that nice little piece of lace in there yeah. that looked kind of fancy. So the other thing about hems, and this is where, uh, this is a nice distinction, I think maybe a good place to wrap up I the I wasn't pod- finished. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, this is maybe a good place to wrap up the podcast. No, go go ahead, Mom. One more thing about hymns. I hear you all talk about bridesmaids' hymns. I hear you talking about the bulk in them and all of this. They need to be a tiny hem. Just surge it, fold it up, and top stitch it. That is basically what the manufacturer... They, a lot of times they do sort of a, a modified rolled hem. You don't want a big, bulky, deep hem in a satin dress. In a satin yeah. dress, it's ugly, you guys. Yeah. It's not supposed to be there. Not good. Not no, good. Get you got get into this millennium, yep. okay? 
Well, okay. Doing just a tiny little hem. So can I can I wrap up the podcast? It can be wrapped. Can I hem it? I think. Can I hem it? Can hem, hem the, Well, I just told. Okay. So speaking of not this, what? Go but ahead. Wait. Go I I, it, <laughs> I just want to say this before this is over because I hope we've addressed most of the places there's bulk. If we haven't, you need to think about bulk. It's what will make your garment look fine and finished. So you're trying to get rid of any big lumpy dumb stuff. Right? Yep. In your garment. Okay. So now I don't have quite the wonderful ring to the end of my podcast. <laughs> my podcast ending I was going to. because, but, but I'm sure people are just wondering what I was going to say, including you. With Hems, uh, once again, Garment Sewing Podcast. But sometimes in home deck, in our draperies and stuff like right. that. We fold up the hem a couple times right. to add not bulk, but weight. 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 It's a finished weight. And then you said get into this millennium, right? Mm -hmm. So once again, looking at the historical costumes behind us, sometimes those hems were weighted. And are they weighted them? Right. Or they were, you know, stiffened with, right. you know, something or something like but that. So bulk and weight are two different things. Right. Okay. Just like you said earlier, bulk and volume are two right. different things. Okay. Well, that was my um, <laughs> my big wrap up. <laughs> You're welcome, everyone. <laughs> okay, Lonnie. Was this it, podcast is for you, just every, so you know. Hope it was everything you hoped for. Um, okay. Well, uh, if you want to get a hold of us, you can email me at Mallory at SoHere.com. Follow us on Instagram uh, and sign up for the newsletter at SoHere.com slash love note. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.